Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. We are almost um, going to get started just in a couple minutes um, as I get Maria on here. So, hey, Edgar. See a couple people here. All righty. Let's get Maria. Hi, how are you? Good, good. How are you? Good, thank you. Good to see you. <laughs> you too. Yeah, it's so nice to just see the sun. <laughs> I know, right? It feels good. Yeah, where are you joining us from? Uh, I'm actually in Florida right now. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Oh, very nice. Yeah. I've been here for a little while now. Um, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. How, are you, how are you holding up? <laughs> Um, pretty well. It's been about, I'd say 40 days that I've been in New York in my apartment. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's, you know what, it's, it's actually really nice. I've been trying to find all the positive things about this. And you know, the fact the fact that we can even have this kind of conversation. Um, I don't think I would be able to do this if we were in a in a normal, um, you know, state. So I'm, I'm really grateful. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And it's, it's really awesome that we can still connect with everyone through technology. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Awesome. Well, I would love to get started. I know that it's um, noon for a lot of people and um, a lot of people are actually like joining in from their lunch. So they're going to be coming in and out. And I'd love for us to just get started. But at the same time, you know, take a couple questions from, from the audience and um, see what they have to say. Um, cool. Yeah, and we've also been getting some questions beforehand. So a lot of people that have met you, um, actually from McGill University, where you attended, you went to a, a class with Carl Moore and, and said hello and explained a little bit more about your path. We got some questions from students there who recognized you. So <laughs> that's awesome. That's exciting. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> that's really exciting. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, awesome. I'm not, I've never done a live before, so I'm not really sure. Um, where to find the question. So yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, uh, no worries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, people are going to be just commenting. Um, and we got a question here. Is there a topic or general theme? Yes. So let's get to that. You have joined the corporate diary. Um, and the corporate diary is um, a blog series. It's a video and blog series where uh, I interview women in male dominated fields and talk about what um, their corporate careers look like, as well as share my own experiences um, in corporate VC and previously in management consulting. So um, Maria is joining us from uh, Athena Club. So she's the co-founder of Athena Club, which is a direct-to-consumer women's personal care and intimate care company. Um, and Maria, if I make any mistakes, please let me know and interrupt me and say, no, that's not what we do. <laughs> no, no, that's <laughs> exactly it. You got it. <laughs> Awesome. Um, and previously, you um, well, you are um, on uh, sorry in strategy consulting. Yeah, for sure. I think um, it really depends what type of consulting you want to do. But if you want to go into management consulting, I think a big part of it is finding the firm that's a good fit for you. Um, it, it sounds silly. They're really massive firms, but they do have very specific cultures to them. Um, I worked at McKinsey. It was wonderful. Uh, great people. But, you know, I can say that there's definitely great people across all the different firms. So it's really about where you get along best with uh, the people you meet when you're interviewing and um, afterwards. Um, in terms of when you get there, it, it really, you know, it depends on your background, what you studied. Um, that's definitely going to impact your experience. But at the end of the day, if you find the right mentors and um, find your interests early, whether it's, you know, uh, healthcare or consumer goods, I love consumer goods. Uh, did not only do that, did some transformation projects, but it's finding what you really love um, and finding people that you really love working with that, you know, is a really good way to set yourself up for a good experience uh, while, while in consulting. And honestly, it depends from person to person, but I thought and from speaking with people that that was a generally a uh, really good strategy for them. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting because your transition from 
consulting to uh, entrepreneurship, that's a huge step. That's a really big move. And something that I was contemplating when I was in management consulting was actually people would always tell me, are you really ready to leave? Um, and what is your exit strategy? And we talk about these exit strategies as, you know, these, it, it's almost like mathematical. And what people would say was that strategy consulting and management consulting offer this sort of safety net where they can be recession proof or a little bit more that they offer like a cushion of, um, of certainty that other companies may not. And so when you are thinking about, okay, what's the next step? How did you come up with entrepreneurship? Something that is, that is risky. Um, were you, were you afraid or was it, what kind of thought process were you, were you uh, undergoing? Maybe it's something that you always knew you're going to do that didn't stop you, uh, whether you're fearful or not. Yeah, um, I think you really nailed that one. It is really scary. Um, I, I do agree that having, you know, working in consulting is nice. You get a really, you know, wide variety of experiences. You get to see different projects and uh, jumping off that ship to go into entrepreneurship, which is a bit like a black hole. You don't really know if it's going to work or not, um, is a tough one. Uh, for us, it was a moment where um, we got to a thousand customers and I was like, you know what? I think this is what I'm really excited about. I've always been excited about it, but really passionate. Um, I think there's a really good opportunity to keep pushing with that. And I see myself just, you know, working on that on Athena Club day and night. Um, and so, whereas it was extremely scary and I remember coming in to, uh, you know, to tell them that I was leaving, my hands were shaking, I was just so oh nervous. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, at the end of the day, I am really happy with my choice. Um, it's a lot more ups and downs, for sure. You know, you can have the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. But at the end of the day, if you're ready for it, and you're excited about it, that's the most important part. And I um, wouldn't do it any other way. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, we actually got a really cool question from the audience. And I don't know if, if um, maybe we can tap into it a little bit more because you touched upon it. It's uh, from Ariel SB. She says, I have a great business idea, but I've been afraid to launch. How do you overcome fear and or complacency? Um, well, it, it really depends, right? Uh, the fear of launch, I think, is, is is it because you are scared of the business not working out? Or is it you're scared to uh, leave your current position to take this, you know, to dive in? Um, I think one thing that really helped me was really talking to people. I know there's this misconception that when you're starting a business, you should be mute about it, not tell anyone because everyone's out there to steal your idea. Trust me, no one's out there to steal your idea because it's hard yeah. enough to start a business like I don't think someone's gonna be like ah yes that's it I'm gonna go source tampons and razors instead of you and I'm gonna do it quicker no um, I think people often have really good advice to give you um, and you know that's the first thing talk through it uh, and that can really help you go into the right direction um, and you know it doesn't hurt to start something on the side uh, with a little budget and test out the waters before you know pouring everything into it you don't have to go 100% right away. Start at 50, see how it goes, see how you feel, and then you can move on to it. I think that's something that a lot of people miss. Um, there's just su such a big uh, VC culture of raising big, spending big. Uh, I think there's definitely the opportunity to test, you know, test things out a little bit before you start, you know, going hard at it. Um, and you can always, always go through the other direction, but I think it really it helps you prepare a little more to prove out the model and to to be convinced yourself that it works and that's i think part of what we did as well yeah, yeah. exactly that makes a lot of sense and maybe if we can talk a little bit more about athena club and what you guys do that'd be great um i do have a specific question on athena club because it's very specific to women or at least when you guys first started it was an intimate and period care company and so i i wonder when you guys were having those conversations yes 50 percent of the population understands what it's like to have your period and like take care of yourself and have having these conversations on um the cycles and and probiotics and vitamins and, and health um but i wonder when you were at that stage 
were there, did you find yourself being challenged or um, was the market receptive to that? Whether it was the market itself or like um, the people that you're speaking to uh, when you're raising money, when you were speaking to business partners and trying to get the word out of what you were solving for? Yeah, I think, you know, you, I was, you know, you, I got the question quite often of uh, you raised and uh, you spoke to, for example, a male audience. Did they know what periods were? And, you know, it, it, to me, it sounds silly. I think, you know, everyone knew the model. They understood periods. Maybe they didn't understand like the very deep intricacies of a period um, that, you know, most people don't share with you know, for example, uh, the others. But at the end of the day, I think people were extremely understanding of what we're doing, very excited about our model. And whether it was talking about vitamins or probiotics and how they support, you know, your gut and vaginal health to uh, periods, I think the concept of essentials that are high quality, that are delivered and that are affordable, um, was pretty straightforward to everyone. I think everyone saw how dedicated we were from the beginning on quality as opposed to anything else. Um, we didn't cut any corners. I mean, we went for the most expensive ingredients across the board and really, um, you know, trimmed down or not trimmed down, but work on our supply chain to be able to cut costs along that line to save uh, people money as opposed to like cutting on the product quality. So, you know, it, that's something that the message and the values were understood from the beginning. And um, I think there was a lot of excitement and I'm, I'm still really excited about it always will be <laughs> and you know we, we see that response as well from others that's amazing and it's funny um janine just joined and janine has reached out um she lives in toronto and uh she's excited for when you guys launch in canada <laughs> yeah i'm super excited too <laughs> yeah she's uh she's reached out about actually the deodorant so I, I tend to share this a lot in my days. Um, so I'm using the deodorant and you have a couple of different ones. Um, so this is number one. And I also have that I absolutely love too. So I don't know if you, if you wanted to just chat a little bit more about your products, what is an all favorite product that you have from Athena Club? Yeah, um, it's a hard question because I love all our products, but um, if I if there's one that I would really highlight, I'd say is probably the razor. Um, I I think it's really awesome. It you know it works really well. Um, it's really well priced, and I just really like looking at it in the shower. Uh, <laughs> and I yeah. find myself saving a lot more than I used to, um, simply because I was like, you know, I have to support the brand. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm kidding. But honestly, I, I could say that I love all our products equally. Um, the same amounts of effort went into each individual one. Um, I love the supplements as well. Take them daily. Uh, I feel really well. I feel really good, actually. Um, and yeah, it's a really tough question you're asking me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the answer could just be all of them. All of them are great. Yeah, Which, I, I would say that. Yeah. If anything, it may be just the color because I don't know, when it comes to the packaging, I'm in love with all of your products um, and all the colors are also great. Time is the charm. Let's try this. Hello. Hi. Is it working? Hi. Oh. <laughs> It's working. Third time is the charm. <laughs> yeah, every time I join, my Instagram just drops or I can't hear anything anymore. It's pretty much the, you know, technology. We love it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's also the time for lives. They, they know that we're, we're breaking for lunch, so. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I think maybe that's part of it. Awesome. Okay, sorry about that. No, no worries. Yeah, um, I recall we were talking about... Um, our favorite products and the answer is all of them <laughs> yes exactly yeah um i wanted to ask you about startup life in general yeah. and when you think about how you've been able to be an entrepreneur and, and co-found a company and, and run a company um mm -hmm. what is a mantra or a life lesson that you take with you and kind of remind yourself on a day-to-day -day? yeah i think you know one thing that um a lot of, you know, there's, there's nothing 
not a specific mantra, but I would say, you know, work hard um, and stay positive. It's really easy to get upset and, you know, just get overwhelmed um, in general, I think, just across life. But um, it, that's something that's really helped me throughout, you know, um, everything is just to remain positive, to always think about solutions as opposed to issues, um, and to just work hard because at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. Um, and hard work does, does pay off in unexpected ways. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a good one. Positivity is definitely something that we need right now too. And just to, to know that we're going to be thrown curveballs, especially you guys launched um, not too long ago, right? It's been yeah. a couple of months. Mm -hmm. So just to keep going and, and having that um, fuel your team and fuel like from the inside out, it, it really shows. And so it's really nice to, to know that that's something that has guided you. Thank you. Yeah, what's your mantra? <laughs> um, I think it is to go with the, so it's funny because I was talking to a friend yesterday and we were talking about what, what is like our motivation or what, um, what are words of, of motivation for Monday, like Monday motivation. Mm -hmm. And I quoted a poem from Hokuse Says and it's about letting life live through you and it's it's a, it's actually a poem about the uh, famous japanese wave mm -hmm. there's like a painting on the japanese wave and it's pretty much like in your life you're going to be thrown curveballs and you you're going to be a tide so if you just allow yourself to go with that and let life take you by the hand um while also working with it instead of against it you'll you'll most likely understand where you're supposed to be and when that is instead of always like fighting against it. Cause I often found myself wanting to control situations and control um, my ambitions rather than saying, okay, I'm going to work very hard and we'll see where I'm oriented to keep Absolutely. going. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a great one. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard, especially when you're like, a, you know, just a specific type of personality. Like it's not easy to just go with the flow. So. That's great. No. Yeah, we debated it yesterday because because of that, right? If you're a type A and I'm definitely type A, it's like, well, how much do you let go of? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. How much do you go with the flow? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and another question I have from you is on being so multifaceted. You know, I, I think you're saying because you speak multiple languages, so you're a polyglot. Um, you're also someone that uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you play professional tennis um, and have a lot of different skills. So how has that impacted your entrepreneurial ways or your creativity? You know, it's, it's, it's really interesting. Um, it definitely helps uh, or helped me. Um, I, uh, you know, playing tennis was a really, really important part of my life uh, growing up. And it's really shaped my personality, I'd say, um, from, you know, I started traveling alone for tournaments at 13. So obviously, you know, you learn how to be organized, you learn, how to it, and you learn how to be really self-reliant. And I think that's something that's really important in, um, you know, when you start a business is to be really able to, um, you know, you need to rely on others, but you need to be really uh, focused and you can't procrastinate naturally because no one's going to be telling you that you need to deliver on something. Um, so that was really helpful. I think also when um, I have reached out to certain manufacturers or certain partners uh, to be able to speak multiple languages has helped. I mean, we have uh, a couple of manufacturers in Europe, so, uh, you know, some of them speak French, so obviously, you know, a, a nice connection point that you wouldn't have if you uh if i didn't speak it and that's solely for being canadian which you know is pretty awesome <laughs> yeah yeah that's it exactly i think it's really great especially um uh, from my, like living in montreal you're exposed to so many different languages and so many cultures and so it's positive to to have that um from a young age to just be thrown into environments where you're like bonjour hello like do good which what which language am i gonna <laughs> yeah. pick right <laughs> exactly. it's a muscle sometimes that, when I start speaking yeah. too fast like still today I might say a word in French instead of English and I'll be like wait nobody understands what I just said uh, <laughs> let me rephrase that yeah 
One of my yeah. lessons is to speak less fast. <laughs> I think you speak super well. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. you have, like, really great diction. I'm like, oh, maybe I should just slow it down and relax a little bit. <laughs> Self-awareness. <laughs> Yeah. Um, now I know that we're almost at time and want to be cognizant of your, your time. And what I'd love to ask you as a last uh, question to, to send off everybody is how has being a woman impacted your corporate career? That's a really interesting question. I think um, you really, you know, I think part of it for me is being a woman has definitely allowed me to start um, in a club with uh, my co-founder, which is really wonderful, right? It's your um, experience as uh, a woman throughout your life and dealing with other companies that really opened that door for me. I think that's something that often people don't realize is that, you know, a lot of people think um, about their experiences daily and their frustrations, but yet they find themselves not trying to tackle it. And I think that's something that uh, we decided to do. Um, in the corporate world, to be absolutely honest, and that's something that I really think is wonderful about management consulting, at least in my experience, um, it really, it was just a really strong um, connection and community uh, for both women, but also for men and women and for um, building really professional relationships around your interests. Um, and I think that was that was something that uh, feels a little different from your traditional corporate positions. I've never had, to, I've witnessed a lot of it and have some people say terrible things about women in the corporate world. Um, and we've all watched, you know, The Office, which is kind of a uh, satire, but often happens. <laughs> Um, for me, at least, it was just a really good opportunity to build really strong relationships with uh, different people, uh, people who have very common interests with me, and also enable me to go into the business that we have now. But it is a really difficult question, and I think there's no one answer for people. It really varies from person to person and their personal experiences. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, I have no more questions, but I want to thank you so much for joining us today in your busy schedule. I know it must be crazy, but no, um, thank you. it was yeah. really awesome. It was really great to connect and to chat and.